Praise God. Welcome to Michael Fernandez Ministries. Today we're going to continue where we left off last week on casting down evil imaginations. Let's go back into the scripture. And I think it's very important that we go into this a little more deeper. It says, for the weapons, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, uh, it says, verse 4, it says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through the pulling down the strongholds. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through, the, through God pulling down the stronghold, casting down imagination, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Last week we discussed about the carnal mind. The carnal mind is your mind, uh, your flesh, the devil, or friends, or family members, whatever, they will tell you, you can't do this, or you can't do that, because of your past, or you had a history of a background, or they have done something in your past that uh, people consider unforgivable. See, those are evil imaginations. We need to cast down those evil imaginations. Even yourself might be the worst critic of your own self. Well, I can't do it because I can't spell good enough or I'm not a good reader. Or I, I cannot, you know, speak properly or I'm tongue tied. Well, let's look at Moses. Moses, he was tongue tied and he was not able to speak properly. But God gave him a translator, his brother. But see, God will make and intervene in your behalf where you're lacking. God will intervene. God will put people in your path or God would allow other people to come in your path to fulfill the vision God has given you. But see, the devil's job is to put images in your mind to tell you you can't do it. And then you begin to believe those evil imaginations and feel, well, I guess that's right because that's how I feel. No, the Bible says, according to what you believe in your heart, so it be done unto you. See, this is very important. There are people out there that think of committing suicide or because they have a divorce, they had a marriage, second time divorce, might as well give up, I can't do this. The Bible says, cast down every evil imagination that exalts against the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? Well, God says you can do all things through Christ will strengthen you. God is saying that you can do it. That you're able to do it. The devil's telling you, or your friends are telling you, you can't do it. Or because you've committed a crime, or, or you're an ex-con, you have a past. See, and society is always looking down on you. But if you let those evil imaginations or words that people put in your heart, that you can never amount to anything, the Bible says, according to your faith, you, what you need to do is cast down those evil imaginations. Well, my kid was doing this at the age of four. He's going to be, so therefore your kids are going to be disobedient. No, don't prophesy on my kids because you had issues. No, my kids are the children of God and they're obedient and they're going to be obedient to me. Don't speak those negative thoughts to captive my family in the name of Jesus. See, when people prophesy, they're literally prophesying on you. They say, well, uh, society says because you're an ex-con or because you did this or you did that, uh, you, you, you can't work in that area, you can't do this. Well, according to my Bible, it tells me, according to the knowledge of God, remember it says, Every evil imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? The Word of God. The Word of God says that you have been forgiven. God's Word says He's put your sin as far as the east is from the west. Isn't that correct? But society or your friends, 
Oh, I remember you. You used to be the one walking down the street doing this and that and stealing and breaking in my, my cousin's house. Well, according to what my Bible says, God has put me and forgiven me of all my sins and all my past. He's put my sin as far as the east is from the west. If God the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost no longer remembers that, why are you allowing your friends or your former friends or your former family or even yourself or the devil tells you you're never amount to anything, you're a screw up, you're a statistic of society that you're going to reoffend or you're going to do what they're saying. Stop that. Rebuke those thoughts. Cast down those evil imagination. You, you know, that not only the devil is telling you that, but you have family members that say, well, well, I, well, your daddy had that kind of temper. you probably going to have the same temper. you just like your daddy. He said, no, I'm like my father Jehovah. He has a, the spirit of love and peace and a sound mind. I don't have no bad temper in the name of Jesus Christ. And if you do have a bad temper, all you have to do is rebuke it and cast down that evil imagination and tell yourself to line up with the word of God. See what I'm saying? God expects you and me to do with something with the power he's already given you. You need to cast down that evil imagination. If you have problems with bad temper in your life and well my daddy was that way so therefore I'm gonna be that way my mama is from Louisiana we just we get mad faster or well that's my uh, that's my heritage because I'm Hispanic and we red tempered that's a lie from the pit of hell your family is God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Ghost you're part of the body of Christ you have his DNA you tell that lying devil of anger or or temper, rebuke it, and cast out evil imagination that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. There are people right now, they're going to psychiatrists because they have an inferiority complex. They have a complex that will never amount to anything. They stay in their home because of fear. They're afraid what people might say because of what they did in the past or, or because they have a divorce or, or a separation in their life. So what? Cast down that evil imagination. Begin to believe the knowledge of God. What is the knowledge of God? He's forgiven you. He's delivered you. He's washed you with his precious blood. You're a child of God. You're the apple of his eye. Some might be watermelons of his eye because some people are big, but so what? But you're still the apple of God's eye. He loves you. So much that he sent his son to die on the cross for you and me. So you don't let the devil tell you you will never amount to anything because you're just like your father who's a drunk. So therefore you're going to carry the family's heritage. You'll be a drunk, bad temper, bad mouth. That's a lie. The Bible says when you became a new creature, old things have passed away. Behold, all things becometh new. My Bible tells That's what you need to tell people when they say, well, you just like your daddy. He said, no, I'm not. I'm like my father. I have his image. I'm created in his image. I am a new creature. Old things have passed away. I am the light of the world as he's the light of the world. I am the salt of the earth as he's the salt of the earth. See, you need to begin to believe the knowledge of God, of what God says about you. But see, long as you allow the devil and your family, uh, cousin Lou, or whoever it is, tell you, you will never amount to nothing, those evil imaginations and those thoughts, you'll begin to believe it. And then you begin to react in it. Then you begin to feel sorry for yourself. Then you begin to stay in the house and you don't want to be antisocial. See, that's what the devil wants to keep you down. But I'm here to tell you the good news. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You are what God says you are. You're his son. You're a new creature. Oh, things have passed away. These are evil imaginations. People have, uh, have committed suicide because they believe what the devil tells them and, and believe what people tells them. 
well, you are homosexual because you were born that way. That's a lie from the pit of hell. God loves you. I don't care if you're a homosexual, prostitute, or homemonger, pervert, whatever. Jesus loves you. He's able to set you free. And we're here to tell you the good news. Jesus is able to set you free and deliver you. We don't care if you did this or that. We're here to tell you we got the answer is through Jesus Christ. And I'm going to put a word of a good image in your heart. Then the image is that you are a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things becometh new. Begin to look at yourself in the mirror and says, I'm God's child. I'm God's apple of his eye. I'm the salt of the earth. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ which strengtheneth me. All the favor of God. See, it's not what you do. It's who you know that has, gives you the right to have the favor of God. You are the righteousness of Christ Jesus. If the devil tries to tell you, well, you still have those temptations coming in your mind and doing this and that. I said, look, that's why God gives you the word of God. He says, you cast down evil imaginations for you to do it. Don't say, oh, God, deliver me. These thoughts are coming to my mind. I'll never amount to anything. I can't do it because my so-and-so says I can't do it. What you need to do says, I rebuke those thoughts in the name of Jesus. According to the word of God, it says, what does it say? Cast down imagination. Every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. That you, Michael Fernandez, need to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. That's telling me I have to do something about it. I need to stop trying to ask God to do something about it. He's already gave me the power and authority in the name of Jesus. Because we're fighting against demons in high places. See, that's why we need to put on the whole armor of God. And, and next week, if I think we're going to be having a, a guest. And praise the Lord, it's going to be awesome. And you please tune in next week. But after that, we're going to be teaching on the armor of God. But today, we're still touching on these evil imaginations well you're Hispanic because your culture you don't supposed to be successful no that's a life in the pit of hell or because you don't have papers or don't have papers or you're legal here or you're not legal here you're still special you're a child of the king you're more than a conqueror through Christ which strengthened you but see these thoughts have kept a lot of people in captivity but we're here. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me to set the captives free, to proclaim the liberty of the Lord to the people who are bound by these thoughts. We need to cast down these evil imaginations that tell you you would never amount to anything. Well, brother, I'll never be successful in my job. Who told you that? Well, uh, statistics shows that. I says, I don't care what statistics shows. I'm just telling you what my Bible tells me. He says he will make you the head and not the tail. You're above and not beneath. See, that's what my God's word knowledge tells me about you and about me. We're sitting in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. But guess what? The devil, your friends, and sometimes your own worst critic is you. Well, that's so true. You know, I guess I might as well give up. I, I tried, but I can't. Well, guess what? Stand back up. You might fall, but stand back up. God says if you fall short of the glory of God, just repent and ask God to forgive you and begin to put this word of God in your spirit, man, and begin to renew your mind daily. Begin to put the word of God in your heart daily. But if you never do, if you never spend time with God's word and, and, and see what God's image. See, we have portrayed the image of the devil about ourselves. These evil imaginations are there to destroy you. Why does he want to destroy you? Because as long as he got you feeling sorry for yourself, oh, you'll never amount to anything. As long as you get pity party, poor me, la 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 la, I might as well give up. I might as well commit suicide because no one loves me. Hey, Jesus loves you, and that's the reason why he died for you. Shall any power or principality 
separate you from the love of God. No, it can't. God loves you. You're special. You're the child of the King. You're more than a conqueror because Christ will strengthen you. But see, these thoughts have bound a lot of people. Well, brother, I have this habit of, of homosexuality. I can't overcome it. I says, yes, you can. You need to wake up. What do you mean, wake up? Wake up and realize that the power of God in you is greater than the power of temptation. God says that he will not allow you to be tempted more than you're not able to resist. So that means the reason why you yield to it is because you allow yourself. You need to begin to speak to that spirit of homosexuality, cast it into outer darkness in the name of Jesus. Or if you have a problem of gossiping or just being critical or just don't like to give your offerings to the church to support your church, you're just one of those stingy people or just one of those haters or jealous people. In whatever situation you have, you need to cast those evil imagination, cast it down. You got power over those evil imagination and rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And if you out there, you have issues like this, call us, send us your email and we'll pray for you. And, and we're here for you to pray for you. But it's time that you put on the mind of Christ. You need to put on the mind of Christ daily, daily put on the word of God and begin to believe in the image of God that he has about you. Well, brother, that sounds all good to you, but uh, my mama says I'm an idiot because that's all she told me I was, an idiot, since childbirth. She said I will never amount to it because I can't read good. I said, let me tell you, you're special. You're the child of the king. You're more than a conqueror. And that's a lie. You need to cast down those evil imagination and rebuke every idle word or any word that prophesied by anybody that tries to prophesy to you. Well, you might as well get used to it. You ain't going to get that job because you don't got a degree. You don't got this. Well, listen, I have the favor of God. If God says I could do it, I could do it. If God says I'm the head and not beneath, I could do it. I could do everything my father says because I have the favor of my father in Jesus' name. Don't let people prophesy over you and tell you you'll never amount to anything because of your color or because I, because you're fat or skinny or, or can't read properly or don't have a degree. Let me tell you, my Bible tells me he, you are the head and not the tail. God is not looking for a degree. He's looking for someone who has a heart for him that loves him. And when you love him with all your heart, let me tell you, you got the Father, and got the Son, and got the Holy Ghost right behind you, and the angels of God behind you, and you got a big team of, uh, of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, and his angels. Brother, you're not powerless. You got the hosts of heaven behind you. And if they're behind you, who can be against you? I'm here to tell you that's a lying devil. You need to speak to those thoughts and say in the name of Jesus, I cast down those evil thoughts in Jesus' name. You have no power over me. I'm a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. If the devil tells you, look at this or look at that perversion, you tell the devil he's a liar, that you are not bound by his power. And rise up in the Holy Ghost fire and begin to use the authority and the, and the power that God has given you in the name of Jesus Christ. And you begin to rebuke those evil thoughts and cast down those evil imagination. You know that every sin, every evil thing begins with a thought. Before you do it, you think about it first. Then you do it. So that's where your battleground is right now. Is in your mind. And if the devil could convince you and you begin to believe it, it's not wrong to be tempted, brothers. It's not wrong to be tempted, but it's wrong to entertain that thought. See, if the devil tells you you're an idiot because everybody else says you're an idiot, it's the devil tells you that. But when you begin to entertain it, say, yeah, you're right. Yeah, I am an idiot. I, I don't have no education. I can't read good. I, I can't read the Bible good because I can't understand all thou and thee. Let me tell you something. 
If my Jesus says you're the head and not the tail, so therefore you're the head and not the tail. You need to begin to believe the positive word of God's word about you. He died for you. He's God the Son who died for you on the cross and gave you the power in the name of Jesus. And you sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So rise up and begin to use the power of Jesus' name and casting down those evil imaginations that exalts against the knowledge of God. That's all the devil wants you to do is keep you occupied about your weakness. We begin to remind him that the grace of God is sufficient and it's through the strength and the power of God that you're able to succeed in life. You don't depend your, your, depend your abilities in yourself. You put your abilities and faith in God's finished work on the cross. When you begin to put your faith in God's finished work on the cross, you begin to walk in authority. You begin to walk in the power of God's word. You begin to activate the word of God. You begin to realize who you are in Christ Jesus and tell that devil to go to hell in the name of Jesus and where he belongs in Jesus' name because you have power in the name of Jesus. My Bible tells me that you sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. So, so that's where you sit. You sit with him far above all the powers and principalities of the enemy. So cast down those evil imaginations. Don't let the devil lie to you. Don't let your friends prophesy over you saying you will never amount to anything. My Bible tells me you could do it. You could do all things. It's not what you got. It's who you got. You got Jesus in your heart. My Bible tells me that he is in you and you are in him. We are one with the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. As the body of Christ, we're together, united with the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And where you walk, God walks. When you talk, God talks. When you sing, God sings. See, He's with you, in you, and around you. The Bible says His angels camp around those that love the Lord. So you got a team of heaven behind you, in you, around you. So don't let the devil lie to you. You can't do it. That's all he wants you to do is feel sorry for yourself so you won't be able to help others. If you're so busy about your little issues, that's where he wants to keep you. Long as he keeps you in bondage and captivity in these thoughts, you won't be able to help other people who are bound by these addictions, are bound, bound by these evil thoughts the devil and friends have told him. You know, we need to begin to get busy in helping other people. But if you're so busy trying to overcome this and that in your life, it's because you haven't woke up to righteousness. You haven't realized who you are and what God has actually done for you. Wake up. Don't let the devil kick you. So when you wake up, the devil's going to say, oh, my God, he's up again. Let him know that you're going to stir up his kingdom. And you're going to snatch as many souls from the pit of hell to win for Jesus Christ. But you need to gird up your loins of truth and begin to realize what God said about you. Begin to repeat after me. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. That's what we need to do. But a lot of your mothers and fathers are telling your kids, you're a dummy, you're a bum, you'll never amount to anything. Even if they are bound by drugs and alcoholism, your children or your family member, begin to speak the word of God. Begin to plant the seed of God in their heart. Begin to tell them you're the light of the world, you're the salt of the earth. God, is be you belong to Jesus, you might as well give up. You're the apple of God's eye and the favor of God's upon you. I don't care if you're bound by drugs or, or bound by homosexual. God has set you free on the cross. And I'm here to tell you the good news. God loves you. And I believe in you, brother or sister or mother or father or cousin or aunt or uncle. You are more than a conqueror through Christ. And I speak the word of God over you. I'm speaking good images of God. You're a successful person. You could do all things through Christ. Begin to speak the word of God over them and begin to prophesy the word of God over them in Jesus' name. But until you begin to build the image of God 
in them so they could wake up and see they don't have to allow themselves to be controlled by the devil, that God is able to set them free. I want us to read in Colossians chapter 1 real quick before we close. Um, there's one thing I realized in Colossians chapter 1. It says this. I want you to follow with me. Colossians chapter 1 verse 9. It says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard, did not cease to pray for you, desire that you might be filled. I want you to put your family member's name on there. It says here, that ye may be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Let's put your name Johnny. That Johnny may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That is 1 Colossians 1.9. That Johnny, in the name of Jesus, may walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. And Johnny being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. That is what you need to start praying. Read this scripture. Put the name of your loved one who, who has been controlled by drugs or uh, homosexuality or prostitution or whatever. Perversion. Put his name in there. Begin to speak that he's going to begin to see the knowledge of God. And he's going to be fruitful in the family of God. You need to prophesy the word of God over him rather than prophesying doom and gloom. I know they know they're bound. They know they're going to hell if they don't repent. See, if someone needs to tell them the good news and tell them that Jesus loves them, that they're special, that God loves them, that Jesus died on the cross, that said so they could be able to sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. That is what God provided for them so they won't go to hell. Tell them the good news. Don't condemn them. They know they need someone to tell them the love and put good images of God's word in their heart. Rather than hearing what they've already been hearing, you're an alcoholic, you're never a mountain, you're going to die in the gutter. Well, begin to say you're the child of the king, and I see you washed with the precious blood of the lamb. I see you preaching the gospel. Right now, let's pray for your loved ones and your family. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray, and we bind all evil forces off of these family members, and we speak the word of God over them, that they're a child of the of, of the kingdom of God and God is separated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your son and if you're sick right now I pray right now that you receive the healing of God's word that has already been provided for you at the cross in Jesus name stay tuned next week we'll call if you have any prayer requests email us and we'll be praying for you in Jesus name Amen <laughs>